Human, All Too Human, A Book for Free Spirits, published in 1878, is a seminal work by Friedrich Nietzsche that represents a departure from his earlier, more romantic writings and the beginning of his embrace of enlightenment rationality and skepticism. In this book, Nietzsche takes a critical stance towards metaphysics, religion, morality, and traditional philosophical thinking, favoring a more empirical and naturalistic approach. The book is a collection of aphorisms and reflections that explore a wide range of topics, all threaded by Nietzsche's evolving philosophy. Nietzsche begins by considering the nature of human knowledge and our cognitive processes. He challenges the idea that there is a metaphysical world beyond our physical one and criticizes the concept of absolute truths. Instead, he suggests that our understanding of the world is shaped by language, metaphor, and the limitations of human perception, leading us to create fictions that we often mistake for reality. In doing so, he casts doubt on the certainty of philosophical systems and suggests that skepticism is a healthier philosophical stance. Religion is a significant focus of Nietzsche's critique. He examines the historical evolution of religious ideas and their moral implications. Religion, in his view, has been used as a mechanism of control, conditioning individuals to adhere to societal norms and perpetuate a slave morality that values meekness, obedience, and conformity. Nietzsche sees the ascetic ideals often promoted by religions as life-denying and contrary to the fundamental instinctual drive for life affirmation that he associates with a will to power. Nietzsche then turns his attention to morality, scrutinizing the origins and utility of moral precepts. He questions the existence of objective or universal moral values, positing that morality has historically been shaped to serve the interests of certain social groups, mainly the ruling classes. Morality, according to Nietzsche, often constrains the human spirit and is used to tame the innate, animalistic aspects of human nature. He argues that our moral judgments and feelings are not grounded in a rational or altruistic concern for the well-being of others, but are rather the product of self-interest, habit, and social pressures. Nietzsche addresses the role of the individual in society and the development of personal autonomy. He criticizes conformism and encourages the cultivation of individuality and the free spirit that questions conventional wisdom and seeks to discover its own values. Nietzsche sees the journey of the free spirit as a lonely one, requiring a person to break away from the herd and endure solitude and misunderstanding. The free spirit must also endure inner turmoil, breaking down previously held beliefs and enduring a process of self-overcoming to create new values and meaning for oneself. The limitations of language and the potential deceptions of consciousness are also themes Nietzsche explores. Language, he suggests, is inherently metaphorical and cannot fully encompass the reality it attempts to describe. Thus, people often become trapped in linguistic constructs, mistaking words for the essence of things. Nietzsche views consciousness as an evolutionary tool that arose for social, not epistemological purposes, implying that the capacity for deep introspection or the pursuit of knowledge is not inherently natural to human beings. Additionally, Nietzsche views the evolution of societies and cultures through the lens of power dynamics. He discusses how cultural institutions evolve not solely from a pursuit of truth or beauty, but also from more pragmatic concerns that serve the preservation and expansion of influence. The forces that shape culture and society are complex, often rooted in the desire for power and expression of the will to power. Throughout the work, Nietzsche applies a historicist critique, suggesting that our current beliefs, values, and systems are contingent upon historical circumstances rather than eternally valid. He points to various cultural artifacts, art, literature, philosophy, to demonstrate how they are products of their times and how they serve to propagate specific values that may or may not be conducive to the flourishing of life. Lastly, Nietzsche delves into the domain of art and aesthetics. He offers a nuanced view, acknowledging the capacity of art to inspire and elevate, yet also critiquing the ways in which art can reinforce illusions and life-negating ideals. He acknowledges the compelling nature of artistic illusions while cautioning against their seductive power to make us forget the more pressing concerns of reality and the need to confront it honestly. Human, all too human, 
is a complex work that lays the foundation for Nietzsche's later ideas, including the revaluation of values, the death of God, and the emergence of the overman. He promotes a radical rethinking of human existence, pushing his readers to question the foundations of their beliefs and embrace the often uncomfortable freedom that comes with such inquiry. By doing so, Nietzsche seeks to liberate the human spirit from the shackles of dogmatic thinking and to pave the way for a new, more authentic mode of living.